Right, so in today's video, I'm gonna take you guys to this lighthouse that I've been quite excited to shoot for what? Maybe the last two years. You're Gavin Hardcastle. Nope. No, you, you no. definitely look, no, you, this is, you're Gavin Hardcastle. No, no, definitely not. What? I've got, I've got cameras. Like, you wanna talk gear? We can talk tripods or? Uh, I think I think you've got me mixed up with someone else. I have your book. Have you? <laughs> Somewhere. Uh, you got my book. Yeah. Hold on. I think it's under Thomas Heaton's book. Let me try to find it. Oh, this is the right one, right? Chasing all with Gavin Hardcastle. Yeah. I mean, maybe we could hang out for a bit. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Tell you what, if you bring a pen as well, I'll sign it for you on location. Can I even get a selfie? Don't push your look. Okay, okay. all right. I'll, I'll, I'll grab my camera. Yeah, I'll give you a minute. So who is this guy? He's, uh, I think he said his name's, what's your name again? Peter. Peter what? McKinnon. Oh, yeah, he's, he's quite famous actually. I was thrilled to meet a successful YouTuber. You know, someone who actually makes money at this malarkey and doesn't have to resort to selling books like I do. But there was something not quite right. This is actually quite, quite a tremendous location. I wasn't expecting it to be quite so impressive, but I am, yeah, it's, it's his idea. How many, uh, how many followers have you got on your, on your YouTube channel? Five million. Wow. Do you subscribe to mine then? Thomas Heaton. Of course. Oh, and Adam Gibbs, oh. do you know him? Anyway, yeah, so we're down at this, uh, this, this cliff edge and uh, I think I've found a, a good shot. Did you know that you can now be offended by me on Twitter and also get sneak previews of what's to come? I'll see you there. So it's funny, I came here thinking that I was gonna take a picture of a lighthouse with some cliffs, not knowing that the cliffs themselves had some amazing rock formations. You know, cause you do, you do your research, you look online, you see what pictures other people are taking. And I haven't really seen that many or any with all of this. So I'm, I'm quite excited about that. So I might not even bother <laughs> taking a picture of the lighthouse. I'm just really impressed with this gorgeous coastline. Now it's not often that you get to bask in the presence of YouTube royalty. So I thought I'd get to know him better. So Pete, yeah. um, are you one of these nomads then? Are you you're like, you just drive around and you live out of a vehicle? Yeah, I just live on the road. How does that affect your love life? What love life? Exactly. This is it. We're doing it right now. Uh, no, um, <laughs> I, I think there's been a misunderstanding. I think you got the wrong idea. Um, <laughs> I, I enjoy my alone time, right? I really enjoy being solitary to a point. Yeah. If I was alone for maybe three weeks, I, I, I would then start to seek out, you know, human contact. Kind of like you've done yeah, exactly. today, but like it That's must be- That's why I hunted you down. Quite literally. Yeah. Um, Remember how we met? I've already forgotten. I already knew you were coming. How did you know? I'm not going to tell you my secrets. You can tell me your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> you bugger. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm, I mean, like, I'm not taking a piss. I'm being serious. Like, it's got to be, there's got to be a time when you sort of say, I'm going to go and visit family and friends and take a few weeks out or whatever. Yeah, so last year I spent seven months on the road. That's a, that's a lot of time. Seven months, it was a lot. The Did only... you meet up with friends or anything? Like I didn't see anyone I knew for seven months. Oh, brutal. Yeah. But th does that teach you some sort of fairly good social skills? In you got to force yourself to talk to strangers and make Absolutely. friends. Absolutely. I met some random people. I met random people in coffee shops and just became friendly with them. And you learn to appreciate the small interactions. This social interaction is some of the most important things for me, for sure. Well, I mean specifically me and me is like you know yeah you yeah i mean i'm really here because of you know thomas heaton oh god here we go do you want that book signing or not oh yeah i thought as much so yeah if any uh eligible ladies are watching <laughs> i mean I'm what is your you have like what seven percent women viewership probably two <laughs> <laughs> probably two percent 
But like, you know, if, 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 you know, if any of you are watching and, uh, you know, you like the look of this, Peter McKinnon, what are you laughing at? Well, uh, where will they find him? Yeah. There's a link <laughs> in the description. That'll be $20, please. <laughs> right, I better go and frame up a shot. As promised, there is a link to Peter McKinnon's channel in the description. I guess I just thought he would be cooler and, uh, well, a bit more Canadian, yeah. Anyway, time to get down to some serious landscape photography. All right, so I framed up quite a taste delicious composition, which I'm sure Peter McKinnon over there is going to come over and steal. You definitely, that's definitely your name, right, Peter McKinnon? Yeah. You don't really look like a Pete to me. You know what you look like? What? You look like a Keith. He looks like a Rex. Raw head Rex. <laughs> <laughs> so let me talk you through this composition. What I've gone for today, which you don't see me do that very often, is a vertical. I've got this really nice vertical comp, which I've chosen it because I'm a, I've got the 14 millimeter uh, I think I've got it at 17 millimeters right now. And what, what this lens is doing is it's really distorting these peaks. So if you look in the distance here, this peak here looks really nice and tall, as does this, let's call it a pinnacle. So it, it's giving everything this sort of elongated stretched look, which to be quite honest, looks, looks more like what I'm seeing with the naked eye. But I always find that when you shoot a horizontal super wide, it just shrinks those, those distant mountains down to little nubs, if you will. So by doing this and stretching it out and putting it right in the edge of the frame, makes it look more like what I'm actually seeing with the naked eye. And then of course, here we've got this beautiful middle ground, which if I just brighten this up a little bit, you can see a little bit more of what's going on here, these really cool rocks. And then you've got these rocks in the foreground. So I'll probably have to focus stack this, focus on this area, then focus on that area. And then I think the background and this pinnacle will probably all knit together in one shot too. So maybe three to five shots. And then I'm just waiting for the clouds to do something interesting here. But we've got this gorgeous side light on all of these rock faces from right in front of me, all the way out into the, into the far distance. The sun is setting just out of frame there. So I'm hoping that this just all glows orange and we might even get some light in those clouds. That is the hope, fingers crossed. And I reckon it's about another hour off. So it's time for some snacks. Have we got any snacks? No. Forget the snacks. Right, so I think we're about 25 minutes away from sunset and the light is really teasing us because it, it pops out and it's glorious and then it disappears just as you take in your shot. But I'm hopeful that it will provide gloriousness at the appropriate time. And if you're wondering why I've got my uh, jacket on during the hot, hot heat of summer, it, it's not because I'm pathetic and feeble and I'm getting cold. It's because the mozzies are, are absolutely awful right now. And I've got the thermocell switched on. It ain't doing much. Perhaps I got a dud, I, I, I don't know, but uh, I'm getting a bit annoyed with these flying vampires. Let's have a look, let's double check this. Maybe I just need to, maybe I'm talking smack. Oh no, it's, it's making its noise. And I'll just, I'll just. No, no, I think there's something, I think it's a dud. Have you, uh, have you set up a shot yet? Yeah, I think I'm just gonna well, I noticed you're quite close to me there. Hopefully that's, you're yeah, going to maintain that distance there. I was going to just take your camera off and put mine on. Do you have health insurance? Excuse me? Because you might be spending a bit of time in a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> right, so the light is actually quite nice right now. I think. Hey, do you mind if I set up my shot here? Well, what are you, I mean, how close are you going to get? I was thinking, well, my shot was right here. I was going to... Well, hang on, what, you don't... No, you can't just get the... F <laughs> this
this was shaping up to be an absolutely perfect sunset. Uh, we're getting some just absolutely gorgeous light. I mean, look at the golden light on the peaks there, the cliffs, and some nice light in the clouds as well. And of course, this foreground, it, it's all coming together. Uh, but I'm actually a bit more excited about what might happen after the sun's gone down, because if we can get that, that lovely sort of crimson, pink glow after it's gone down, I, I, I mean, I love this light, but that sort of moody light that's either pre-sunrise or post-sunset, uh, that's, that's when the magic really happens. And I reckon we're about ooh, 10 minutes away from the sun dropping down over the horizon there. The last, the time had come to capture a photogasmic shot. ended up being a three shot vertical pano and that's how I got the pinnacle and the cliffs to look so tall and pointy which I just couldn't do with a horizontal shot. Hey. Are you getting eaten by mozzies? Yeah I am. Because you're tasty. Well I feel like I'm probably tangy at the moment. <laughs> you are a bit tangy, love. And a bit spicy as well. <laughs> oh. Oh, I didn't even like bringing that up. <laughs> You're so foul. <laughs> I don't know where she gets it from, but uh, I wouldn't change her for the world. I also wouldn't change this afterglow. Well, it's, it's kind of happening. Most of the cloud buggered off, as it always does. But what stuck around is really catching that light. You probably can't see this on the video, but just there, there's some shadows. They're probably kilometers long, those shadows. Um, you're, you're in my shot. Put with your hand. What are you talking about? I'm in your shot. I was here first. I, yeah, but I'm shooting. You just need to not flail about. Those shadows. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm currently writing a new book and I need to know which version of this image you prefer. Do you like this afterglow horizontal version or do you prefer the pano sunset version with the pointy lens distortion? So I know which one I like, but post a comment and let me know and that might decide which one goes in the next book. So did you get a, a good shot, Pete? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? Did you? I think you know I did. At least one epic Tresmendous shot. I, I'm hoping though that like, you know, with, with your millions of subscribers that I'll probably end up on, on one of those Peter McKinnon videos. Oh, I didn't even film. I guess I should have specified that at the beginning. That, that costs a lot. You didn't, that I, wasn't in the contract. Oh, people pay for that. Oh yeah. You don't charge? No. That's where I'm going wrong, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what, Pete? At least, at the very least, I've learned some business tips in this video. So I, I do, I do really appreciate that, actually. Yeah, you should try to sell a book. Chasing awe with Gavin Hardcastle. There's a link in the description below. Do you want me to sign your book for you? Oh. Mm. Yeah, I just wanted to hang out. Uh, I actually, <laughs> I found this on the side of the road on the drive up here. I didn't know how to tell you. But you still know Thomas Heaton, right? You can get me in contact with him. Yeah. All right, so if you like this content, make sure you smash that like button. Hang on, hang on. Smash that like button? Yeah, that's what I say. Uh, I know Peter McKinnon. You're not Peter McKinnon. Who are you? Um, Did you lie to us? Yes. You didn't tell him any secrets, did you? I told him the darkest secrets. <sighs> Every time. So who are you then? My name's Alex. Alex what? Armitage? You've never heard of me? Of course not. 
<laughs> what a fantastic day we'd had in spite of his despicable lies. So we spent the night nearby in our luxurious camper while Alex dosed in his vehicle like a hipster hobo. What is that? It doubles as a toothbrush. I'm not going to ask about the primary purpose. <laughs> so it's the night after our uh, rather epic lighthouse shoot, even though <laughs> the lighthouse was not even part of the shot. But we've uh, woken up on the beach. We're going to head a little bit, maybe five, 10 minutes down this coast to another beach where I'm told there's a very pointy sea stack. And you know I love sea stacks, especially pointy ones. So we'll we'll wait for uh, Alex to finish using his face dildo, and then we'll we'll get on the road. Have you ever seen the likes of that, love? Well, I love electric toothbrushes, but I've never seen anyone live in a car and have no electric toothbrush. I mean, you'd think that he'd want to conserve battery power. You know, like that that life comes from battery power in a rig like that. Did it run out? <laughs> oh, it has a timer on it. It's Two got a minutes. timer. Oh, that's that's quite clever. Yeah, it's 30 seconds a spot. Yeah, exactly. It's 30 seconds per section of teeth. Yeah. That makes sense, yeah. So I'm basically using an outdated analog toothbrush. Yeah. But look at me biceps. <laughs> Don't look at them like that. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Oh, you've been doing stuff, eh? Yeah. Picking up <laughs> fat cats. So how old do you think... Uh, What's his name? Alex? How old do you think Alex is? Uh, about like 26, I'd say. I'm going to say 18. But why would he lie to us about who he was? That's kind of strange, don't you think? Well, I think he was just trying to impress impress me, you know. I wish we'd kind of stopped for breakfast, because I'm feeling quite bacony right now. We found the beach, but we've lost Alex. I don't know where he's gone. You know, these millennials, they're not... They're not really as good at using things like GPS as they think they are, really, are they, love? I think it was us that got lost. <laughs> we got totally lost. I think this coastline is a, it's a treasure trove. In fact, it's so good, I might even start thinking about doing like a seascapes workshop right here in Nova Scotia. If that's something that you might be interested in, get in touch. Anyway, we've got about another 10 minutes before we get there. And then we'll see what's what. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. I, from the side here, I'm going to call that kneeling dragon. That's that's the dragon's head at the top, and those are its knees at the front. I, I'm not sure if dragons have knees, but it's a kneeling dragon. That's what it is. So I'm thinking that the galactic core of the Milky Way will pass right over those and then at some point be right in the center of these two sea stacks which would be quite a good shot but i just wish i had something in the foreground of that because you know that with the milky way would be okay but that with an extra layer of something interesting just down here would be fantastic but there, there's nothing really so maybe what i'd do is just put you in there love i could, I could like just get you to stand in front of that and that will be my, th my third element. Do you not think I'd be standing in water? Well, that's the thing. It all depends on the tide. It might not be physically possible. Or you could just be like up to your waist. That might look cool. Well, then I just look like a mermaid. Yeah. That's a good idea. I could get a tail. Oh, look who's here. What time do you call this? Bitch, I came back to try to see if you were okay. Did, did you just call me a bitch? <laughs> yes. That's sexist. <laughs> I then decided to jump into Alex's vehicle because where we were going was not necessarily camper friendly. Right, so I've jumped in uh, Alex's house, basically. <laughs> this is where you live. You're actually in my bedroom. It's, it's a while since I've been in another YouTuber's bedroom. And my bathroom. And I, I didn't enjoy it the first time. Um, so yeah, we, we're gonna try and find this uh, slot canyon that I was told about. The reason why I've jumped in with Alex is because I'm not sure how steep this dirt road is. And if the camper can't handle it, I'll have problems. So it's best if we just scope it out in this beautiful forerunner 
How many flat tires have you had in this? Never. Never? Have you got 10 ply tires? Uh, I think they're eight ply, 10, whatever KO2s are. Right, I don't know. I'm sure someone in the comments can let you know. So you went all the way to Alaska through Yukon yep. and you didn't get a flat tire? Nope. But you see all the cracks on the windshield, those are from the Yukon, Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we're not taking a camper up this. When you travel with old people like me, mm -hmm. we have this thing called wisdom where we've, we've done it all before. And so we try and predict disasters. Is that why you keep getting lost? Well, you know why it is? Because my wife uses an iPhone and they're terrible. Ah. Terrible at navigation. Oh, I see. Well, I found all the spots with an iPhone, so. All right. So you're saying she doesn't know how to use it then? I would never say anything like that about Amanda. Look at this. This is, uh, well, we're on a fairly flat bit now, but yeah, this, the camper is not coming up here. Now, I, I do have one question about your hotel on wheels. Mm -hmm. Where's the toilet? It's out there. Oh, right. Uh, alfresco toilet. So you don't mind bug bites then at two o'clock in the morning when you, when you need a late night plop? Well, thankfully, I don't ever have to have a late night plop normally. How's that? I'm not as a frequent flyer as you. Uh, again, it comes with age, <laughs> you know? And then uh, I guess the only other thing is where's the shower? I don't see a shower. Uh, wherever I can find one. Oh. Sometimes a nice pond. You're joking, aren't you? No. That would explain the fragrance. Yeah. yeah. So if we hear a creak as soon as we get out, we've we've hit the right spot. Well, I, I literally hear crickets. I, I don't hear a creak. Pretty sure we got to walk a little bit. Oh, got it. At least we brought appropriate footwear. I still can't hear a creak. Now it could just be that we've, we're not in the right place. Oh, is that, uh, is that bear poo or dog poo? That's bear poo. That's bear poo. I don't want to go in there. Did you bring, you've got your boots in the car, haven't you? Yeah. So you, you could actually go and do this while I just sit on my phone. I left my bear spray in the, in the truck, but you've got some, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do the honorable thing. And you know, cause I'm old now, I'm 50. He's only like 19 or something like that. So, you know. He can run from any bear. I can see two other bear turds. All right, Alex, who do I contact if you don't come back? Amanda. You'll figure it out. I'll be back. I'm confused. Well, like a true hero, I, I've allowed Alex to do the recce mission just to see if there's any water in the creek. Uh, I've actually seen three, <laughs> three bear plops. So, you know, it's probably probably safer if he just, you know, he, he goes and looks and I'll just wait here inside the car. Normally I wouldn't sit inside such a hot car, but uh, the bugs are horrendous. In fact, I might just crank the engine and put the AC on while he suffers in the forest. Well, he's been about 10 minutes now, so I, I just got too hot and sweaty in here. It's so humid, so I, I just started it up and... Oh, the AC is so nice and uh, I thought I might as well do a bit of business so I, I phoned up and paid for my truck insurance while I waited so hopefully it's not gonna be much longer well it's been a while I have no idea where he's got to a bump start yes! making yourself right at home you even got the AC on what well, it's muggy I'm out there finning off bears scouting your locations did you see any bears I saw a lot of poop so how was it did you find it That'll be at least twenty dollars. Can you give me a clue? I heard water. How much? A little, a little stream. Is that not enough for you? Thanks. Anyway. <laughs> So this, this camera bag that you can see on my back right now, this is my, basically it's my climbing camera bag. One camera, one lens, one thin jacket, just pare everything down and only take the absolute essentials. So uh, this, this isn't coming in my camera bag, but I, I've noticed that Alex has, uh, he's, he's got his full size bag there. So can, can you just, can you just put that in there and I'll, I'll grab it when I need it. You want me to carry your lens? Yeah, and have you got a drone in there? I didn't bring mine, but I'll... You have a drone. I'll just get your footage then. 
That'll be twenty dollars. <laughs> uh, uh, Canadian dollars. No. <sighs> Right, so we've hit the trail. It's, it's pretty narrow, but it looks like it opens up a little bit. Why, uh, why isn't Amanda with us? Oh, it's no big deal. She just, uh, she doesn't like liars. That's what it is. You mean, she, about your OnlyFans account? No, about you telling me you were Peter McKinnon. Oh. It's a bit out of order, that. Yeah, but I just wanted you to like me. How's that working out for you? So that is Bear Poo. Number three. How many how many bear plops did you count earlier? Six. Six. Oh, here's another one. That one's pretty dry. This is the paw and the claws are right there. Yep, that is a bear yeah, print. Definitely a bear. You want me to go ahead? Yeah. There's... Why, Why yeah. is that? Well, you just, you know. Do I look more delicious? Yeah, that's what it is. Definitely more taste. Well, you're definitely more salty. I'll give you that. If a bear bites into you, it's definitely going to get a caramel center. That is for sure. So the reason why I'm, I'm quite keen to check this place out is, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure I'll get a nice shot if there's enough water. I do like the idea of a, a summer slot canyon ravine waterfall shot with some nice green moss and all that kind of business. But to be honest, it's more of a scoping out session for the winter because what I really love is when you get a waterfall in a slot canyon during a big freeze, because the water sprays up against the wall and gives you these amazing chandeliers of ice, uh, in addition to the frozen or semi-frozen waterfall. So this is more of a sort of recce mission for me so that I can come back in the winter and get an absolutely otherworldly shot. That's assuming I can get down the road. This is just a recce mission? Well, I want to see how many bears there are. What about you know? for me? Well, I mean, this is the highlight of your life, let's well, be honest. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's like a, it's a Kodak moment for you. And if we if we get hungry, there's, there's plenty of uh, chicken of the woods available. Are you allowed to eat that on your diet? Oh, you, you can definitely eat that right now. They're sweet and salty, well, like peanut sweet. butter. I don't trust you. Who, who couldn't trust a face like this? <laughs> all right so we've we've hit the first uh, rope as you can see there and it goes all the way up that gully that that is steepsville i'm glad there's a rope not not so bad for me going up but coming down is quite sketchous so i guess we're gonna go up that it was decided that Alex should go first because let's face it, if I fell and landed on him, he, he wouldn't survive. Anyway, what kind of mushroom is that? Bloody weird looking is that? I did consider offering to take out my telephoto lens from his camera bag for about three seconds. Well, do you want the good news or the bad news? Bad news. Well, I'll give you the good news. We've reached the top of the hill this hill there's another one yeah so we, we climbed the hill entered the mushroom forest and we're following the trail markers uh, but we're getting further and further away from the creek so i'm hoping we're not just following a different trail like this looks pretty overgrown to me look at that that's i mean these are the markers but that hasn't been used in some time and I can't hear the sound of the creek anymore, so what do you think? Do we double back and see if we miss something? Uh, we could just go eat some mushrooms and have a good time. <laughs> I don't know if the, the good kind. All right, so we've determined that Alex completely messed up the directions and we've taken a wrong turn up those ropes. That's probably not the right trail. I definitely blame Alex for this. If I'd been the navigator, I, th I think we would have been We'd have been there. I'd have already finished. I don't want to be filmed again. Will you just leave me? Oh, you bastard YouTubers. Now, it's about that time that I, I ought to give you a pro tip, and that is to uh, wear gloves, ideally leather or faux leather, when you're using ropes to go down a sketchy trail like this. I like to call them uh, old man's cruiser gloves. You want me to spread, or...? Oh, they're not latex. Oh. Yeah. I, oh. I forgot the lube as well, so... I, I brought that. It doesn't surprise me. So back down the hill we climbed, 
like a couple of clueless vertical kebabs here for the pleasure of the local bears. All right, I'm back down at the creek. Alex is almost down here and then we're just gonna stick with the creek this time, just keep going up it until we see something that looks like a, a slot canyon. It's the, it's the new uh, Timberland Mossy Forest model. It takes some years to grow that, that moss there. What do you think this sells for? Oh, that's gonna be at least $400 US. And finally, we found the first waterfall, but there were still challenges ahead because just as we climbed the last of the ropes and actually found the entrance to the canyon, it turned out that all of our efforts were for nothing. All right, so the good news is we found the slot canyon. The bad news is there is absolutely no way we're gonna get in there. Let me show you this. This is how you get in. <clears throat> so you see my feet, you see this rope. Yeah, you have a 16 foot rock face that is slippery and uh, there's, there's no chance. Like the canyon's in there. I could probably get down but there's no way I'm going to get back up. I mean, even if my leg wasn't gibbled, I might have a chance, but there's no way. Even I'm going to pass on this. This is, my wife will actually be quite pleased to see this. So, that, so that's it. Nothing, no shot to be had. I didn't even know there was ropes until we got here. I'm pretty sure I mentioned ropes. When we were here. <laughs> yeah. And so with empty memory cards, we headed back to the camper, reeking like a couple of wet dogs. How was it? God, it was a total disaster. I'm just covered in sweat and I stink. Yeah, yeah here you have a shower. Come come right in, Alex. I brought my, my soap. Do you watch my channel? Do you have a channel? See, if you watch my channel, you would have seen my good friend Brent try to get a shower here many times. Do you know how many times that succeeded? Zero. That being said, uh, your ripeness right now is so pungent because he's basically a hobo that lives in his vehicle that I'm going to make an exception to the, the Brent rule. What, what do you think, love? Should we, should we let him have a shower? Yeah. But an outside shower. An outside one, is that acceptable to you? Are you gonna watch? Of course. As Alex luxuriated in his monthly shower, Amanda was keeping tabs on the hot water usage. There is a limited supply in the camper, after all. By the eighth minute, she'd reached her tolerance and it was time for a change in temperature. And it was at that point he realised I'd been streaming on Snapchat. Oh yes, this already looks a lot more promising. Maybe the day won't end on a bad note. I'm all about that big knobbly stack over there. And I'll give you a tip about drone photography, and that is if you want really sharp stills, you need a ton of light. Now you might prefer the light that happens after the sun's gone down or before the sun comes up. It's nicer, it's moodier, beautiful colors and all that. But if you're doing stills photography with your drone, you need as much light as you can get so you can get those super fast shutter speeds and get that freeze frame action. So I think now is about the time, an hour and a half from sunset, the sun is blasting away, but it's low. And that means we've got beautiful low side light on these sea snacks and islands. Look at those reflections in the, in the water there. This final shot was actually a three shot panorama stitch, which I stitched together 
and Luminar Neo. What a fantastic couple of days we'd enjoyed. But as they say, all good things come to an end. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the old thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to tickle me bell. And uh, I'll, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. Later. <laughs>